Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the YouTube account. And of course, with the Greyborns, we did get Rando. We don't know the impact of what he's going to be. But overall, we got a Greyborn and very similar to what we've seen with Wilders. There is a second addition to the Greyborn, which of course is the Awakened version of Thorin. We know that has been confirmed. I'm going to hop over to Facebook. I want to show you exactly what they're showing about this hero. And he's pretty interesting to see. Now, we know the original version of Thorin was the Thorin cheese. This has literally been used pretty much since AFK Arena has ever been around. It is still being used today. Even in the current chapter that I am in, the Thorn Cheese is prevalent. The Thorn Cheese is still being used in formations. So let's hop over here and check out what this new version of the Awakened version of Thorin does look like. All right, so to kick this off, we're going to look at the stained glass window. Now, you remember we've seen this for all of the Awakened heroes, um, but looking at the Awakened version of Thorin, he does very, seems very true. I mean, even tried and true with the, the design of him, with the sword um, overall with the crown, seems like he is still going to be the ultimate king. And of course, we're going to have to see exactly how the story is kind of built around him. But you'll notice that it is Necro Havoc. Now, that is pretty interesting. This makes me think there's a possibility that this hero might not come in the tanking class. It hasn't been confirmed, and I haven't seen anything saying exactly what he is going to be, but I don't know if they're going to keep him a tank. Since we do have the Awakened version of Shamira that was released as a tank, I don't know if they're going to move him to the Warrior class. And a lot of players were saying, just looking on the class rotation, that he technically should be, again, based on rotation, he should be a Warrior, warrior class which again, you know, looking at how many we have of each, how many we have of each faction and where they kind of should fall. He should fall in as a warrior class, but don't know if that is going to be true. Now, looking at him here again, you can see he looks like he got a lot bigger, a lot beefier than he was um, before. So the, the Death's Supreme Thorin, um, I do like how he is built. I love how he looks. Now, you'll notice very similar to what we've seen from other heroes is he kind of has this kind of Athalia um, kind of look or kind of almost like spears. I don't know exactly what they call him in this version of Thorn, but it is almost like he has spears that are around there. And then, of course, he has this massive two-handed sword, it looks like, right there in the middle. And then they did a video on him. Now, looking at him again, thinking of how massive he looks and looking at the weapon. Now, very interesting because this makes me think straight up like a World of Warcraft Illidid weapon um, when I see this. But again, you'll also notice that there are multiple spikes behind him, which again makes me think um, he can easily play the role of a Greyborn strength tank or burst. Again, I don't know if that's going to be a strength tank. That is what they put in here from Lilith. This is what they put up on the Facebook. Um, let's see how marvelous his fighting skills are. So tank or burst, so that means could be Graveborn strength hero tank with burst damage, which again would be pretty interesting to throw that burst effect on a tank. Now also I don't know if or when he's gonna be released. Um, I'm gonna have to check over on the test server, see if anything is in there, but I wanna break down these skills because of course looking at here, he puts his sword in the ground and you can see that is the ultimate ability. So that is very similar, almost the charge effect that he does right now when he's taking the retaliation effect. I don't know if that retaliation effect is going to stay in effect where he can absorb a lot of damage and then he's going to retaliate the damage in this giant, as you can see right there, um, massive lightning. Now you'll also num notice right off the bat there are numbers. So depending on how many times they get hit, this is probably going to be one of the amplification effects on how many um, how many charges essentially one of these enemies have. I don't know at one point is it going to trigger something or if it's going to be a buff or a debuff that this hero can pick up. But again, looking at the model of Thorin himself, guys, that's a pretty massive hero. It looks like he's kind of sitting back a little bit. Very, very true to even like an old school Lord of the Rings um, dead king which is very cool. So you see there's the attack. Now, as soon as he got attacked right here, he turned into this almost like a fireball. You can see Thorin's face right here on the bottom. And then he pops up right out of here. And you'll also notice that when he shows up, you can see that this hero right here, number two in the top, is thrown into the air almost like a tornado that we've seen um, from Iran. So there is kind of a knock up. There is a knock back. Don't know exactly what that damage is going to look like with this hero, but overall it looks pretty cool. And boom, one big swing there. Now you'll also notice right there, 
is with that very big swing he did at the end. This number went from one, it went to two, boom, right there it is. So again, I don't know what this is going to be um, either buffing up to power up or if this is gonna be a debuff that he is putting onto these targets, but it's kind of crazy. Again, that's almost the retaliation effect that we've seen. And then boom, it looks like that is going to hit everyone. And again, he takes a little bit of damage. There's a little bit of crowd control. It's gonna be kind of crazy to think this hero um, and exactly how he's gonna be and how he is gonna be built within here. So just hopping over to the test server, I wanted to see, I figured with the reset tonight that we might see the Necro Havoc and he is up on here. So really cool to see that this, of course, is gonna be the Awakened Hero and he does look absolutely amazing. The Undying Tyrant right there, guys with the Awakened version of Thorn. So now in addition to this, we are getting the Time Emblem. So we're getting 10 out of here. Um, this is usually gonna yield us another 12, which is gonna give us our 22. And then of course, right here is another 10 that's gonna give us 32. And with the release of the hero itself, we're getting another 50 like we normally do. So 50, 60, 70, 82 total time albums that you're getting with this hero. Now, of course, getting them out of a multitude of game modes, you're gonna get a jump because they are also going to give you, like we've seen in the past, a discounted summon. So you're actually gonna be able to do, I believe the first 60 summons or six full 10 summons for um, a discounted rate. So you're not gonna use as any very many cards in there or as many cards in there, which means every time that a awakened hero drops, you almost get a hundred cards out of there, which is kind of crazy to think. I know right now, especially with the improved rates, that it does take roughly, and what we've seen is about four to 450 cards to get a fully built awakened hero. Then of course, moving him over to the Stargazer where you can continue to add the one star. So getting the base ascended model of an awakened hero is running about 450 cards. And of course, wait to see exactly where he's used. We have to see um, where he's gonna be used, how he's gonna be used, how effective he's gonna be. Also looking at what the skills and abilities he's gonna possess. We're gonna have to see exactly what this hero looks like. And of course, knowing that this is going to be the final Awakened Hero of 2024 till we roll into 2025, who did you think it should have been? I know a lot of players um, through the last couple weeks when we've been kind of talking about what is going to be the next Greyborn, who exactly it was going to be. Are you disappointed with them choosing Thorin? Me personally, I think Thorin is a pretty good choice. I like the build on him. Um, that would be pretty cool if they did keep him as a tank. But I know there were a lot of players out there that absolutely wanted to see like an Oden. I'm um, seeing a lot of comments out there for like an Isabella. Looking at some of the older heroes that we had in AFK Arena, because of course we did Shimira. We also did Baden already. Now Thorin is joining it. Um, didn't see Grez. And I know again, Isabella was one that was a fan favorite that a lot of players did want to see. Now, in addition, we know that Nara moved over to AFK Journey. We know Tassie moved over to AFK Journey. So it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how they play this going into next year. And also 2025, what iteration and what pace they're going to continue um, releasing these Awakened Heroes. What faction are they going to choose first? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you guys for watching.